Okay, perfect. I think, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, so, hi, uh, everyone. Good morning or good evening, uh, depending on, on, you know, which part of the world you're at. Uh, I'm, I'm Jia Yong, uh, your, your host for today, the Global Marketing Manager of I'm Token. So, I'm Token is a non-custodial, decentralized uh, wallet. And uh, we're very excited because we are actually uh, celebrating our seventh year anniversary. Yeah, we have actually been around for seven years. It's, it's, it's not something that many in the industry can can say that and something that, you know, we're definitely very excited to to celebrate uh, with you guys as well. Uh, so this uh, today we, we have uh, guests from the LSD uh, projects joining us to talk about, you know, uh, the future of staking and LSDs uh, post the Shapila upgrade. And this is... Uh, part of a series that, that we have uh, as part of our seventh year anniversary uh, celebrations. So so before we get started, I just want to share, um, as, as part of the seven year uh, anniversary campaign, uh, we are actually giving away a hardware wallet, an IM key hardware wallet. Uh, and, and how to take part, uh, you, to how, how to take part, you can uh, basically check out the, uh, the tweet right below uh, that we posted right below uh the the official announcement for for this AMA uh basically what you need to just uh do three things follow I'm token official Twitter account you have not done so uh complete the galaxy task and then listen to these Twitter spaces for for 15 minutes at least so so yeah that's how you can uh take part and stand a chance to win an uh, I'm key hardware wallet okay uh so enough enough about uh, uh, me for now. So maybe uh, you know, today we are very excited to invite uh, Stakewise, uh, Rocket Pool, and 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 uh, Frex Finance to you know go through with us. Uh, what 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 exactly or what can we kind of expect? You know, uh, post uh, Ethereum, Chapella upgrade. So so to to get the ball rolling, uh, maybe I'll just get our guests to you know do an introduction of themselves. What what their project do? What do they do in their project? Uh. Yeah, so maybe uh we can start with Darren from from Rocket Pool. Hello, everybody, um, and thank you very much for the um uh, for the invitation. Um, I am token is actually uh, one of my first wallets back in the day, so it's uh, it's good to, good to be here. Um, so um, I'm Darren Langley. I'm from Rocket Pool. Um, I am technically the general manager of the core team of Rocket Pool, um, but Rocket Pool is a, a decentralized protocol, so we have kind of lots of people uh, involved in Rocket Pool at the different levels and that sort of thing. So Rocket Pool is a decentralized liquid staking protocol. Um, we are the third largest liquid staking protocol uh, in, in the Ethereum space. Um, we are kind of over 3.5% of all the Ethereum staked um, today. Um, and we have over 2,700 independent uh, node operators that are staking that ETH. Um, yeah, so that's, that's us. Perfect. Uh, maybe we have Kev Kirill from Stakewise to, to do an introduction next. Hey, uh, hello again to everyone. Thank you for having us here on the panel and happy birthday to I'm Token. Um, actually, I can, um, I can also reflect on, on my experience with I'm Token, one of the first wallets I ever used, and also one of the first wallets to include Stakewise into its uh, DApp store. So great to be here. Um, when it comes to Stakewise, we are a liquid staking protocol that uh, I had the pleasure of uh, contributing to from the very beginning. Um, we currently have about 100,000 ETH staked across two different products. One the staking pool where you can pool capital with others and stake any amount of ETH and unstake at any moment. Uh, and also Stakewise Solo, which is uh, uh, something where you launch your own validators on our servers. Um, we also are a decentralized um, autonomous organization, the EDAO, governed by a token held widely by people around the world. And we're pushing um, the new standard of liquid staking with the upcoming product called Stakewise V3. I'm, I'm happy to talk more about it today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it seems like uh, 
I, I'm talking with the first wallet for quite a lot of uh, people, especially in the OGs in the Eastern Archery. It's definitely great to hear that. Uh, yeah, uh, Dave uh, from Frex Finance, maybe could, could you do an introduction? Hi, Dave. Can you hear? I think I'm on mute. Hey, um, hey, how's it going? Sorry, I, I lost my connection there for a bit. Um, what was the first question again? Uh, could you give an introduction of, of yourself and, and Frex Finance? Yeah. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm DeFi Dave. Uh, I am the founder of Flywheel DeFi, which is a grassroots media company and also a core contributor to Frax Finance. Um, Frax Finance is a, I'd like to think of it as a decentralized stablecoin protocol. We make the most decentralized and innovative stablecoins in the space. We have our flagship product, Frax, which is a dollar peg stablecoin. And of course, we have Frax ETH, which is an ETH peg stablecoin that uses a dual token system. Uh, we can get back that into more uh, as the space goes on. Uh, we launched in October and uh, have been the fastest growing LSD by far, already the fourth largest LSD in the space. And uh, yeah, we have V2 coming soon. So, Awesome. Sounds great. Uh, so maybe, you know, um, I, I, maybe for those people that still don't don't really know what, what, what you guys do or, or the projects, or what is the selling point of, of your projects, uh, maybe could we kind of have an... Uh, I guess I guess the like elevator pitch, or you know, of like, or or maybe a a, a summary of 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 what 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 your project offers. That is like you know different from from the others. Uh, yeah, maybe we can have uh, Darren start the ball rolling on this question first. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, at a high level, uh, what makes us different? Um, we offer actually two forms of staking. So we offer both liquid staking and node staking. So liquid staking is basically the simplest way to stake your ETH today. Um, you deposit ETH, you get a liquid staking token back. Uh, that accrues value over time as you know the rewards generate on the beacon chain. Um, and then you can you can take that kind of liquid staking token and use it in DeFi protocols and, and all of that sort of thing. Ours is on um, a lot of kind of lending protocols, liquidity platforms and options protocols and all sorts of things. Um, so that's uh, so it gives you a lot of flexibility in in how you want to use it. Um, on the node staking side of things, so this is kind of what makes uh, Rocket Pool um, somewhat special is that um, our node operators is we have a permissionless validator set. So um, as a node staker, you run a, an Ethereum node, um, you bring with you uh, some sort of uh, bond, which in our case, so usually as a if you're a solo staker on um, by yourself, uh, you would need 32 ETH, but with Rocket Pool, you would just need 8 ETH plus 2.4 ETH of, of RPL as collateral or as a, essentially a good behavior bond. So that's what kind of makes us special. Uh, we've got 2,700 independent node operators, and that's because we're um, permissionless. Um, anyone can be a node operator with Rocket Pool. Um, we've kind of tried to strike this. I think it's actually very, very important to strike a, a really good balance between decentralization, scale, and performance. When I say performance, I mean kind of yield. Um, if you if you kind of trade off in one direction, uh, then you, you're either not going to have a good product uh, or you're going to undermine the health of Ethereum, um, which isn't very sustainable in the long in the long term. So we've kind of chosen this permissionless um, node operator set, um, as I said, so that anyone can be a node operator, uh, which kind of maximizes decentralization for Ethereum. Um, we've also we also choose to have a bond. Um, we've got quite a low bond in terms of eight ETH, but um, uh, lower than you would usually. Um, but that means that um, our node operators have skin in the game, so they you know they they're trying to earn a good yield for themselves and for uh, liquid stakers as well. Um, and also that uh, kind of ETH and the RPL provide kind of a, an insurance. Um, so that um, our liquid stakers are protected, um, even even against kind of quite unlikely tail risks and that sort of thing. So that's us. Awesome. I, I love how you guys you know try to make uh, staking accessible. Oh, we by by letting people eat ETH and two point four RPL to yeah basically be able to to stake. Uh, so I guess the focus is really more on 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 decentralization. Uh, so yeah, that's nice to hear. 
Uh, yeah, so may maybe for, for Kyo, could you, uh, what we say is the, I guess, uh, elevator pitch of, of uh, Stakewise and what may, makes you guys different? Yeah, thanks for the question. So right now, what, what sets Stakewise apart is the fact that um, our liquid staking service is powered by not one token, but rather two tokens. One token is for deposits into the Stakewise pool and you know, consequently into the beacon chain. And the other token is for the rewards that flow from it. Um, before Chapella, this was uh, perhaps a superior way um, to get liquid staking tokens because of the fact that having a separate reward token allowed you to reinvest your rewards back into deposits periodically, uh, even when there was no ability to extract rewards from the validators themselves and also handle your rewards separately. Um, in the end, it, um, it produced the, the highest APR, APR out there thanks to the ability to compound. So uh, we focused on that extensively in our first stage of growth before Chapella. And now that Chapella is out, we are introducing new functionality into Stakewise uh, in order to further set ourselves apart. Uh, this functionality is the ability to mint um, a liquid staking token, no matter how you stake ETH. So effectively, it, it would give people a set of tools with which they can have a liquid staking token for their solo stake, for their own staking pool, etc. So we're trying to democratize access to liquid staking and also provide uh, various software to simplify staking, um, just, just the technical part of staking itself. And uh, yeah, I think in terms of trade-offs within these different products, we really um, are now taking the sort of middleware approach where you have different ways to engage with staking for stakewise. If you go through just your typical stakewise pool, the trade-off is typically delegating your ETH to someone else's node. Uh, and even though you kind of have the security of uh, this token being collateralized um, by, by the people who supply it, you, you still kind of are letting your ETH flow to somebody else's node. Um, and, and some people are not cool with that because they feel like they lose control. On the other hand, if uh, we talk about solo liquid staking that we will be powering, um, you will be in control of your stake from the beginning until end. So you run nodes, you're responsible for your own stock staking performance. And this kind of feeds into the LST that you hold. But uh, this comes with a higher capital requirement. So like Darren mentioned, for for Rockpool, for example, the capital requirement to become a solo operator is effectively 10.4 ETH. In our case, we don't lower this requirement to you know an amount lower than 32. But at the same time, we enable access to liquid staking from your own solo node, which to date was not possible. So the trade-off here is uh, more capital requirement uh, in exchange for more control over your liquid staking experience. And uh, yeah, the good part is that at least uh, when you're staking on your own, you can approach this in a variety of ways, utilizing uh, new technology like DVT, like like restaking, et cetera. And we're aiming to, to power a new sort of generation of uh, staking pools on Ethereum with, with that model. Yeah, th thanks for the very uh, comprehensive uh, answer. Uh, yeah, and, and I like how, you know, um, like, like you are definitely clear of of, of, of the trade-offs that, that are being made rather than like just mentioning that uh, yeah, you are, like, like you guys are kind of like an, yeah, doing doing any anything for for everyone. Uh, so yeah, I think that that's that's definitely a, a good point to raise. Uh, so last but definitely not least, uh, Dave, could you maybe give uh, I guess like like the rest an elevator pitch of like Frax Finance and what may, makes you guys different? Yeah, of course. Um, so Frax Finance, like I said, we make stable coins. One of them is uh, Frax ETH, and what makes Frax ETH unique is that it has a two token system that really plays into the concept of stablecoin maximalism, which is an idea, you know, the Frax team brought forth at ETH Denver you know, a few months ago. And it's, just, it's this idea of 
eventually every DeFi protocol is going to look like a stable coin and all those stable coins at scale are going to look universally the same in structure. And so taking that idea in concept, the Frax team constructed uh, Frax ETH like a stable coin. So like I said, there's a two token system. Uh, there's Frax ETH, which is the equivalent to WEF. And then there's S Frax ETH, which is uh, the stake Frax ETH, is, which is, which is uh, where you earned the yield. And so, you know, what's interesting about the Frax ETH system is not, all, you know, all of, even all, even though all Frax ETH, you know, may be floating around, not all Frax ETH is staked in S Frax ETH. So there's always a boosted yield in S Frax ETH. Um, other than that, you find uh, Frax ETH in the curve pool, um, which is uh, so the, the Frax the Frax ETH uh, ETH curve pool. And um, what's interesting is uh, people will play between the rates, and so sometimes you know the curve pool rate is higher, sometimes the S Frax S Frax ETH rate is higher. And from this, we've been able to grow to over 200,000 uh, stake fr uh, frac seat that is actually staked. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, it's playing itself out. Uh, we're, we'll see where it goes. We're already, like I said, the fourth largest one. Um, and yeah, so that's how frac seat works. It's pretty simple. Got it. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Definitely, yeah, very interesting to hear about, about frac seat and, uh, yeah, the focus of stable coins for, uh, for frac finance. Uh, yeah okay so I, I think I'll just open this question uh you know anyone wants to answer can can just can just go ahead uh so so I think uh, you know decentralization is definitely a, a very topic that that's very important for any uh project and any protocol so my 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 question is you know does do you guys think uh staking uh makes ETH actually more uh you know ETH, ETH actually more centralized you know because like uh to have the full control uh, like what Kira mentioned you have to have 32 ETH and 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 uh, you know how how can we actually make uh Ethereum staking more decentralized you know if uh since there's the goal so 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 does anyone uh want, want to take this question first I'm happy to take that um uh, Kiro here from Stakewise so I think our thesis and you know mine personally is that liquid staking protocols um just broadly as a market segment have been a pretty significant driver of centralization on Ethereum. And this is due to the, let's say, advantages that they offer over the just vanilla staking. These advantages are, of course, the ability to stake any amount of ETH and not just in pops of 32. It's the ability to use this staked ETH for uh, yield enhancement in DeFi, either through leverage or through farming opportunities. And it's the ability to get your ETH back from staking at any time through a liquid, um, for a liquidity pool. So these advantages uh, speak to many people because of the hurdles uh, in staking. This is the technical requirements, so running your uh, machine 24-7 to ensure that your node is up and running. It's the capital requirement again. And it's the inability until recently to get your staked ETH back, get your ETH back from staking at any moment in time. So from our perspective, um, what you know, is, is one of the core centralizing factors for Ethereum, it's liquid staking. Um, I think it's fair to say that Lido has been a pretty pretty successful protocol uh, because they're solving this staking problems for their for their customers, but also uh, this leads to the concentration of stake on the nodes of just let's say 30, 35 companies. Now we love what Rocket Pool is doing to kind of fight against that. We we think that having a very decentralized node operator set like Rocket Pool does and lowering the barriers to entry into into solo staking is doing great, great wonders for Ethereum's decentralization. But we also think that until the access to liquid staking is, is uh, democratized, if you want to call it that, um, we will continue having this, this issue of stake flowing to the same operators over and over again, whether this be into, you know, Coinbase, CB for, or Lido. And so from that perspective, we think that 
an LST in order to access the benefits of liquid staking should be able to be minted by by anyone who who stakes ETH, and also staking should be offered by more operators um, without necessarily requiring them to post some some governance token as a bond or post any collateral at all. And so we're pushing for this sort of marketplace approach where stakers are free to choose among the different operators who are free to join the marketplace. It's kind of a, you know, um, both sides, bringing both sides of the of the market into one place, stake wise be free and allowing people to create pools to receive capital from others. Um, again, stake any amount, unstake at any moment and give the ability to access uh, DeFi with a liquid staking token uh, from any pool, uh, you know, having the same token to have composable liquidity across this whole marketplace. And uh, yeah, our thesis is that ultimately it's the access to liquid staking that's, that's broad and inclusive and doesn't require people going through the same providers all over again is that some is something that will help Ethereum remain decentralized. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what's Darren's and Dave's take on this. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, liquid staking is definitely a, a centralization vector uh, or potential, a potential cent, um, centralization factor. It's kind of played out uh, in that in that way. Um, I, I do see it changing, uh, which is very nice to see and very, uh, very hopeful. Um, I mean, from from like the solutions to, uh, to that problem, uh, we've always uh, kind of thought, well, OK, so liquid staking, you know, it democrat naturally democratizes staking. Um, but it's the node operator side that's really important. And that's uh, the work that you're doing as well um, in terms of. You know, we, we think that lowering the barrier to entry for node operate, uh, you know, node operators, and that is that's not just like the capital requirement, um, although that is a, that is a, a major one, um, but it's also you know lowering the, the the technical ability that you need to as well. Um, so we've developed lots of tools around um, you know, staking to make it easier and, and more streamlined. Loads of documentation and education. We have a massive community that is onboarded hundreds and hundreds of new node operators from zero to nothing. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a, a thing um, that's important um, going forward. More home stakers. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's what we, that's what we actually need uh, rather than kind of corporate spinning up nodes. Um, so, I mean, one of the things that's going to be really important is we are seeing more and more decentralized options coming, uh, coming on board. Um, we'll see them kind of develop over time, see which ones, you know, work, which ones don't and all that sort of thing. Um, the Ethereum roadmap is looking really positive, or at least there are some potential items in the Ethereum roadmap that, you know, are, are really great for decentralized staking protocols. Um, so yeah, so it's it's looking really. I, I mean, I'm I'm very hopeful and for the future in terms of decentralization. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everyone's points here. Um, uh, I think just proof of stake in general is a centralizing force because with proof of work before, you only needed power to in order to you know mine but with proof of stake you need power and an internet connection and so naturally it's going to coalesce in areas where there's stronger internet connection uh to participate in proof of stake and on top of that you know you you always see this like tendency of like large groups to form like you know whether it's like exchanges or lido or you know whoever else and so i think uh the ethereum community has done a good job of being very aware of these centralizing forces and they've been doing a very good job of like, okay, like what can we do about it? And so I agree, like, um, you know, having you know, marketplaces for node operators, uh, giving like the node operators the ability to choose, you know, where they want to stake, making it easier for node operators to stake, you know, creating this culture of, of oh, let's stake at home, um, like, you know, run your own node at home. And so, you know, I'm pretty optimistic about the future um, as long as we're, you know, still cognizant of, you know, the risk that involves centralization. Yeah, thanks, guys. Really, really great, great discussion, and yeah, I really love the points that you guys have have uh, raised about about you know decentralization <laughs> and and how uh, Ethereum staking is a centralization force. Um, maybe just just for me to add one more point on this. Uh, so 
So I'm token, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we are a uh, non-custodial decentralized wallet. And and one of our, our goals, uh, actually, we do have three goals uh, for as a company. So firstly, is uh, to increase the number of people who trade on on, 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 our, on our wallet uh, via token loan, uh, which is a DEX in the I'm token wallet. Uh, secondly, is to, you know, of course, to onboard, uh, to get more people to ha- uh, hold more of their assets under our wallet. Uh, and then third, it's, it's actually to actually get more people to stake on the I'm token wallet. So so just to give you guys a bit of preview, uh we, we are actually uh looking to introduce a staking as a service uh a uh, 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 function and app uh I mean uh, a function within the app uh for people with 32 ETH to you know uh easily uh, uh stake. So so yeah just to give a bit of preview about about a new feature that, that we are going to be launching soon uh, regarding that. All right. Um so um, maybe just you know two two more questions and then we can kind of open the 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 AMA to the floor. Uh, so the uh, what the next question I want to ask is about you know the the future basically. So uh, staking has actually increased right after the 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 Sharp Pilot upgrade. So so that's great. Uh, however, the the staking ratio you know is still lower than uh, other proof of stake chains. Right, they have about fifty to eighty percent uh, staking ratio. So why 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 do you think guy uh you know why do you guys think that's the case and you know how would that change and and how how is your project you know going to onboard or going to incentivize uh more users to stake? So yeah, anyone wants to uh answer this question? Yeah, I think it will get there. I mean, Chappelle just happened recently, like a month ago, and you know once Lido came out with withdrawals, now now it's a matter of like okay, I think it will be a slow march but a steady march towards um, staking. And I, it, it's hard to imagine, you know, each staking not go up to like 80, 90%. And the only ETH in your wallet is for gas purposes. Um, maybe there's, you know, some stuff around institutions and institutions are looking for the right solutions to stake. But I expect to get to 80, 90% uh, eventually for, for staking, for sure. Because why, I mean, why would you give up that yield? And so it's just a matter of, you know, choosing like re- whether you're a node operator or a staker just choosing the right solution for you and whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, I think I think we we're definitely going to get there. Um, so the the pending validator AQ is up to like sixty thousand at the moment. So uh, essentially, what that means is the you know, Ethereum's staking uh, system <laughs> is being flooded with new with new node with new kind of validators. Uh, so we're definitely going to get up there. Um, I, I would say I, I don't think it's going to get as high as like 90%. I, I think uh, 50, uh, between 50 and uh, 50, 60, 70, something like that is, is kind of doable. Um, one thing that, one thing is that there's a few things that could play out. So at the moment, ETH is actually very useful in terms of um, you actually use it. <laughs> People actually use um, ETH um, today. As we, as we go on, um, the one thing that uh, could change all of that is account abstraction, um, and that could get us up to those those kind of higher percentage levels. Because with account abstraction, it means that you can actually pay gas in in different um, different tokens. You don't have to use ETH, so that's going to be a big thing. Um, yeah, so I, I think it'll it'll get up there. Um, what where it, where we end up, um, I, you know, it's, it's very very difficult to tell. I'm, I'm rubbish at predicting the future. Um, in terms of incentivizing users to stake. To be honest, there is a very, very natural um, uh, reason why people would want to stake, and that is you earn a very good yield over a very long time. Um, most of the people that we've uh, we've kind of are staking with us, um, you know, ETH is they're, they're dedicated to ETH um, and they're dedicated to ETH for the long term, um, and so it's a very, very good yield for something that you just put yeah you know, aside and, and keep keep going. Um, if a part of that you want to put in DeFi as well. Then you've got that flexibility as well. So it's really, it's really cool. Um, we don't really need to incentivize people to to stake because it's such a great product. Yeah, and I guess uh, echoing the the sentiment here, I also believe that we will reach uh, much higher uh, a much higher share of Eve staked, perhaps not to the tune of eighty ninety percent, but uh, somewhere in the ballpark of let's say. 50 to 60. And uh, in terms of what would get us there, I believe that 
just looking at the, uh, let's say, the distribution of ETH broadly in the ecosystem, there's still plenty that's just sitting in wallets. There's there's plenty that's sitting in sort of lower yield products within lending protocols and uh, other places. And it feels like it comes down to two things. First being the safety of staking or at least the perceived safety of staking. So collectively as a, sort of a staking industry, perhaps we can do a better job at educating people about the risks versus sort of rewards from staking. So that's one. Um, secondly, I also think that um, on the, let's say, um, safety spectrum, we should, we should probably aim to be sort of more resilient. So build more infrastructure like uh, distributed validators, um, like uh, more, more, more clients for um, accessing the beacon chain just to make sure that people have more options and are a little less concerned about, you know, the potential losses of their principal within staking. Uh, because most of the time, uh, what people, like the reason why people hold on to their ETH and don't really put it into different places is because this is, you know, their favorite, um, favorite asset in the world probably. And they want to hold on to it. And, you know, they're very afraid of losing it. So as long as we keep sort of uh, changing the narrative around, or rather not, not changing the narrative, perhaps keep pushing the narrative that, that staking is a safe option, um, perhaps just staking natively is safer than for a liquid staking protocol. You know, so do that, do what's best for you. But ultimately, uh, we need to do a better job of educating about the uh, sort of risks, rewards, and uh, and 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 pushing people to to not not be afraid. Yeah, thanks. I think really great points raised just now. Uh, you know, I, I like how everyone is quite optimistic uh, that the staking ratio, you know, we will definitely uh, get there. I mean, simply because uh, it's definitely a great product and definitely really very good incentives are really being offered uh, to, to users just by staking. Uh, and yeah, we'll definitely reach there. And I think I, I also like, you know, curious points about um, education as well, for sure, uh, in terms of like like the safety and I, I guess, you know, what are the trade-offs of, of the, you know, you want to do different types of uh, staking. So yeah, I think I think uh, speaking speaking of uh, another question is related to you know how how this staking ratio can increase. I think potentially uh, there's been some talk about this topic of uh, restaking, right? So using the same ETH to to stake across uh, different networks, and then and then you basically get uh, you can get more rewards, and then uh, you can actually have some uh, you know uh, but you actually have new slashing conditions uh, with these uh, different networks. So, so I mean, just just an open question. You know, what what were your, your you guys' thoughts on on restaking and and how it will actually affect affect your project? Uh, does anybody want to answer that question first? I'm happy to take a stab at it. Um, so, I think restaking is essentially leverage. Um, you are leveraging the security that you already provide to one network to also secure another. And uh, historically, when we look at the implications of, uh, of leverage for uh, the financial markets, um, it, it kind of uh, like new innovation like this would typically lead to a quick run up in, uh, in, in like market volumes and valuations and other things. But it would not necessarily always be sustainable. People tend to overdo it. So... Just, just taking this as context, I think our approach to restaking is sort of cautiously optimistic. And the, the reason for that is, of course, we want to make sure that users take the most, like take advantage of, of opportunities to secure other networks and extract more yield from that. But also we want to make sure that, um, you know, the developers of such technology and also us as people who implement it don't lose track of uh, like let's say the the key goal involved in staking ETH which is to secure the Ethereum network and to to make sure that we are not compromising that 
So as long as we keep this in mind, I think um, restaking as a technology is, is uh, something that, that can give um, another growth spurt to the sort of crypto industry and have uh, we could have more apps with their own sort of networks popping up for you know their specific use cases, which would probably increase the adoption of these apps because they would be able to optimize their specific needs. But yeah, we would we we'll always try to let's say think of the risks involved as well and encourage everyone to to also do so. Yeah, I mean, from our perspective, it's exactly the same. <laughs> we are we're cautiously optimistic. Um, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see um, what what Yugi can do in terms of economic modeling around that that stuff, um, because it is going to be important. Um, um, you you are essentially leveraging the same stake uh, multiple times, so you have to be very, very careful um, uh, with that kind of approach. So th I, I would like to see more kind of economic modeling uh, and kind of analysis on the threats uh, before we kind of go with, with both feet. Um, but I, I, it's certainly interesting. Um, like the, it, it makes a lot of sense in terms of uh, not having to create um, trust networks over and over again. Um, but yeah, yeah, we just have to be careful of like the sec or second order effects. Yeah, I think rethinking is a really interesting concept. You can do a lot of creative things with it. Um, from what, when I looked into it, I had Sri Ram on my podcast. Really great guest. Uh, heart's in the right place. Uh, from what I understand about uh, how rethinking works uh, with Eigenlayer, um, so 16 ETH that's already staked, securing the ETH network is another 16 ETH that is um, like uh, that is not staked, and that is the ETH that is that part of the 32 ETH. It's what it it's what is being rehypothecated, and so what's really cool about Eigenlayer is you could secure something as large as a rollup or another chain, or it can just be you know a specific conditional task like liquidation or limit order. But I do agree we should be cautiously optimistic. Uh, Vitalik recently came up with a blog post about it, you know, warning against like, hey, like there are low risk activities we can do with it, but there's also high risk activities. So just keeping that in mind and it's really healthy to have these kind of conversations but overall i think it's a big net positive for ethereum um and as long as we have those healthy conversations i think it could add a lot of innovation to the space overall yeah for sure i think uh, restaking is definitely very interesting uh, personally very interested in that and you know follow that uh, a lot and yeah but for sure it can definitely be a double-edged sword and you know uh yeah, and compromise on the security of the network. So, like, like what everyone said, I, I, I generally agree with, uh, yeah, what, what you guys mentioned about that just now. Okay, uh, I think now we have spent about forty minutes. So maybe just final two prepared questions on my end. Then we will just open up uh the the AMA to to the floor. So, uh, so this question is is more related to, I'm token and would like to kind of hear uh what, what what you guys have have to say about it. Uh, so. So in terms of, uh, you know, you know, um, a lot of the users actually hold, you know, still hold their tokens in, in wallets, right? Especially non-custodial, uh, decentralized wallets like I'm Token. So, so I mean, in general, in, in your opinion, uh, what, what, what is the role of, you know, Web three wallets in, in the future of staking, and and how can how can Web three wallets, yeah, basically play, uh, play a part to incentivize more people to to stake. Uh, does anybody have uh want to get started on that? Yeah, happy to share my thoughts on the topic. Um, so ultimately, wallets are the gateway for people into non-custodial um, DeFi applications. And this is, I, I guess, uh, uh, both an opportunity and, and a responsibility. So I think generally, the way that you interact with dApps through a wallet is uh, the, the crux of of uh, you know what UX looks like in in crypto, and from this perspective, the the more abstraction we we have, the fewer frictions, the more transparency into what you are doing with your capital uh, that you can introduce into the wallet, the better. So from that perspective, you know we have talked about things like 
account abstraction, but also abstracting some actions um, and, and perhaps trying to, you know, present them in a different way or bundle them within um, your wallet app would, would do wonders for crypto's UX and perhaps push more people to use crypto products for their, their um, sort of needs. They may not necessarily be related to just crypto native things, but anything that involves um, transacting with, you know, certain value, be this paying for services um, in form of, of uh, subscriptions or, or streams, um, be this uh, betting, uh, be this um, handling their their assets for just real life. So overall, because of the fact that we're quickly approaching this uh, sort of singularity within the digital space, we need to have a very strong sort of UX for crypto and blockchain-based applications and wallets are in a perfect place to, to um, sort of tilt, tilt the, the scale in, in favor of crypto here. Yeah, um, so I, I totally agree there. Um, wallets are a primary interface. Uh, they have a, a major opportunity to make staking super easy, seamless, um, and uh, as Kerry said, um, uh, to have that kind of transparency and education, you know, ed- educating um, uh, educating users on on these thing, uh, on you know what is a decentralized protocol? Why should you <laughs> why should you go? Uh, why should you stake with this one? And, uh, and yeah, in in terms of different um, aspects of of the trade offs um, that we've kind of spoken about, um, liquid staking tokens are fast becoming like a, a core primitive within the um, kind of crypto space. So there's a lot of opportunity for innovation. Uh, new features kind of around, built around these primitives. So, yeah, it's going to be really exciting, um, particularly with you know, account abstraction and you know, gasless transactions and all this sort of thing. It's going to be an interesting future to watch. Yeah, I agree. I think wallets play an essential role into onboarding people into staking and Web3. I think not only does it come down to education, it comes down to linguistics and uh, just putting terms in a way that people can understand whether, you know, is there a way we can say wallet better or staking better or because DeFi has not done the best job <laughs> with with language, uh, you know, if you like look back on everything, but we can definitely improve on it. So I think if there's like better ways to describe things if, and it's easier for people to understand and say like, oh, I can earn like this, you know, this yield on, you know, the staking, then, you know, I think it can work out better. Uh, I think, you know, ETH staking overall is just a really good, simple opportunity for people to, you know, participate uh, and earn yield. Uh, it's basically the equivalent of like charge rebonds, but for the entire ETH st- uh, ecosystem. So, you know, I think yeah, matter comes down to education, language, uh, easy to use interface, uh, and they all together play an, an essential role for, you know, proliferating staking to the masses. Nice. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Uh, yeah, I think what you guys mentioned, uh, I mean, we are definitely working on it, like account construction and all that. There are a few cool features that, that you know, we will were to push out to, uh, yeah, basically have, uh, give the better user experience uh, for 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 uh, Web3 people. So, yeah, uh, maybe just the last question on my end, then uh, we'll open up the panel discussion on the, to the floor. So, uh, maybe could you guys give us a sneak peek of, of, you know, uh, I guess like your future roadmap or what, what we, you know, we can be excited about uh, from from your project moving forward. Uh, so does anybody want to get started on that? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. <laughs> so um, at the moment, uh, we just delivered our Atlas um, uh, release, um, which the idea behind that was to kind of support withdrawals. Um, so our node, node operators being able to access their rewards um, and to be able to fully withdraw, but also to kind of scale uh, Rocket Pool. So originally we needed 16 ETH as a node operator, but now you only need eight. Um, so that's that's been amazing for us. We're, we're growing at something like 20% every two weeks or something, so 10% a week. Um, so that, that's that been fantastic for us. That's been keeping us busy. Um, we're actually in a bit of a, um, a planning period at the moment. So we're a DAO, so it takes a little while to kind of 
um, uh, figure stuff out, but we're going through like a prioritization process. There's a lot that the, the community kind of want us to work on. So, um, and so we're, we're kind of like going through that at the moment. So uh, I would definitely, uh, you know, look out for this space because we'll, we'll have some more stuff on that over the next few weeks. Yeah, so the the future of FraxEth. Yes, yeah, so we have FraxEth V2 coming soon. Uh, it's going to be a more decentralized version of FraxEth. Uh, you know, we're going to allow other node operators to opt in to participating in the FraxEth system. Um, that's part of a, a larger effort by Frax to decentralize. So uh, I'm not sure if people saw, but we just released the GitHub for FraxGov, which is going to decentralize governance and everything's going to be done on chain. And not to mention, we have Frax V3, which is, you know, will be the most decentralized, innovative, and scalable sca stablecoin yet coming very soon to you. Yeah, when it comes to Stakewise, we have a major protocol upgrade that we call Stakewise V3 that is coming up. Um, been in development for um, many months, and the community has been patiently waiting for the release. Um, there's a lot riding on it. And the, the, reason, the reason for that is the ability to do things with liquid staking that you couldn't do before, whether this be solo liquid staking, so accessing DeFi with the, your solo validator while staking from home, the ability to choose your operator in an operator marketplace and find the best terms for you in terms of APRs, in terms of costs, in terms of MEV strategies, and also their approach to staking, whether they're using DVT or restaking, etc. And so, yeah, within within this uh, massive scope, there's also a software that we're working on to enable people to, to solo stake without your, your typical sort of technical difficulties. Um, we have a graphic user interface. We have graphical. We have uh, automation for... Um, node updates and uh, switching between various clients. So anything that you would probably think of as uh, like some difficulties with uh, with solo staking, we're trying to uh, to fix that so that you could access um, DeFi protocols from the sort of safety of your own home node and help decentralize Ethereum. So stay tuned for the public testnet that's coming out within weeks, and uh, we'll we'll. Uh, show you what we've got. Awesome. Definitely sounds like various. We can expect various hunting updates from, from all, um, all three projects. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I think we will close the Twitter space now. So, yeah. Thanks. Uh, and, and yeah. Uh, good night. Thank you for having us. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Our pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.